So it's 6.15 a.m. here. Been up all night watching a film, uh, Ironclad, which is set during the First Barons War in the reign of King John. I might make a film review about that later, if I get around to it. Um, but I've been up all night. I've had a leak in, in the house, which is a bit dramatic. Um, it was raining heavily last night, and this is an old house. It's uh, It's been leaking, basically, uh, segment of my ceiling so that was a bit of drama um but I, i've just been skimming through some newspapers and um it, it's uh there, there's so many things to talk about right now regarding identity politics regarding um the power of pol the police regarding race relations regarding all all sorts of things around it and i'm not going to cover absolutely everything in this video but um the I reports that um, a group called uh, Democratic United Lads Alliance, uh, which has been described as a sort of far right football firm, I'm sure they wouldn't describe themselves that way. Um, this group has said that they will gather at notable at use uh, this Saturday, I assume in London and elsewhere. Um, coincide with Black Lives Matter and anti-racism protests. Um, who would want to be a police officer right now? You know, um, I think that uh, there's a potential for trouble on Saturday. I imagine the Metropolitan Police will be um, having contingency plans for this. I think they'll be anticipating trouble. But, you know, um, the anti-racism group Hope Not Hate has attacked this this group, um, Tommy Robinson has backed the move. Uh, I saw a bit of his clip. He was very um, outspoken in his opposition to the uh, the vandalism of these statues. Um, but Hope Not Hate has basically said that um, they're trying to push their hateful and provocative agenda. Um, I have no interest in defending this group. They they sound like, you know, the Democratic United Lads Alliance. It's definitely sound dubious. Um, but Hope Not Hate is an organization I've I've lost respect for. I used to sort of see them as just a kind of well meaning anti racist organization. But the problem with Hope Not Hate is they're not consistent. Um their focus is entirely on white neo-nationalist types and i'm not a white neo-nationalist so i've you know i've no vested interest in sort of standing up for them uh, i think white neo-nazis should be confronted and i do think they're a problem um but the problem with hope not hate is they pretend to be an organization against extremism and against hate but they're pretty much silent when it comes to islamist extremism they're pretty much silent when it comes to black and Asian racists. Um, and the problem is, if you're presenting yourself as an anti-racism lobby group or an anti-hate group, then I think you have to be consistent. Um, it's a bit like stop the Stop the War Coalition, so-called. They pretend to be a pacifist organization, yet their entire focus is only on Western foreign policy. They don't have a word to say about Russia and Assad. But, you know, I don't want to digress into another subject so much. But I, I think it's just a similar example of a prominent organization that is not consistent in its purported um, agenda, its purported ideology. So that's why I don't give much time to hope not hit, because I don't think they're consistent. You know, it's not that I have any problem with them uh, condemning neo-Nazis or white supremacists, fine, I condemn them. It's that they're not consistent in also condemning Islamists and black supremacists. There's an organization called the Black Israelites. They're actually prescribed as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. And that's saying something, because the Southern Poverty Law Center um, is a fairly left-wing organization. Um, you know, they're not, they tend to, prescribe most of their that tag to to white supremacist groups so for even them to prescribe the black israelites that way says something and there's a video that's doing the rounds at the moment showing a white woman who's literally 
groveling to these black guys. It's somewhere in the United States, but um, I know they have at least one branch in London. Um, so, you know, groups like that also need to be scrutinized. They're extremists. Um, any sort of racial centric group, in my opinion, need to be looked at with a great deal of scrutiny um, because they're nothing but trouble. But, you know, for Hope Not Hate to say that the far right groups are agitating, um, well, what do they think vandalizing statues is? Um, that's agitating. That's provocative. Um, and the problem is, if if councils just turn a blind eye to this, if police forces turn a blind eye to this and just let protesters vandalize anything they deem to be, you know, uh, impure or um, representative of racism, then it will just look like the police aren't doing the job. And, you know, I think that the police are in a very difficult position right now because there is all this um, this narrative about police brutality and the UK is not perfect. Um, I do think we are a lot, we have a generally much better record than the United States for the most part. I'm not going to say that British police are squeaky clean. I've seen examples of police in the UK abusing their power. So I'm not going to say they're squeaky clean. But I do think they have a profoundly demanding job. And, um, you know, the likes of The Guardian was talking about, and the BBC was talking about, oh, largely peaceful protests. Um, there was a significant amount of violence, actually. Even if most of the protests were peaceful, there was a significant amount of violence. It wasn't just a small secondary thing. And there were some disgraceful examples of police officers being absolutely attacked. Um, in my opinion, they should have a right to defend themselves. If you're wearing a balaclava and you're actively attacking police officers or you're vandalizing things, then you're a criminal. I don't care what you call yourself. I don't care if you're white, black or Asian. If you behave that way, you're a criminal. And I think the police should have the power to apprehend them. And it's a little bit troubling seeing these images of police officers being outnumbered. Of course, the Tories are partly to blame for that. For their cuts in police numbers they can't entirely escape that um but it's it's troubling um even sadiq khan condemned that and you know sadiq khan's done a lot of virtue signaling over this thing but you know as mayor of london of course he cannot be seen to be condoning violence against police um but you know they're in a difficult position because on one hand, the public want to see them enforcing the law. You know, people want to see the police stepping in and, you know, apprehending people who are just rioting and who are attacking them, who are vandalizing things. On the other hand, the police know full well that the way things are right now, if, for example, they apprehend a black person um, and it's taken out of context, then there will be people pushing an agenda who say it's brutality. Now, I'm not one of these people that say police brutality doesn't exist, but I think at this particular time, uh, people need to be careful before judging um, because there's going to be a lot of situations that people will pounce on without knowing the whole story. So, for example, you may have someone who has been rioting or looting or uh, basically causing trouble and then five minutes later, uh, they're arrested. And then someone just starts videoing it. And they'll say, like, oh, why is that person being arrested? But the truth is, we don't know the whole story. And I'm not saying, by the way, that's the case with um, George Floyd. Uh, I think, you know, there's... I've, I've looked at all the videos available of the George Floyd case. Um, and I, I agree with the consensus. It's, there's no excuse for what happened. Um, you know, when a suspect is clearly saying they can't breathe, common sense should apply. And I've not much sympathy for officers that don't apply common sense. But, you know, I had, um, I had a dealing with the police earlier this year because I, um, I was coming home from the cinema and the guy had actually, um, this would have been about 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. And I saw this guy. Actually, I thought he was impaled, 
on the on these park on this park fencing. It looked quite serious, and a woman who obviously you and seemed concerned. And I was thinking, well, if this guy's seriously hurt, quite a cold night. Um, you know, I can't I can't just walk past and leave him there. So um, he was physically upside down, and his um, his tracksuit was actually caught on the railing. Um, and he looked like he was in quite a state. Uh, she thought he'd been stabbed. So I thought if this guy has been attacked or something, he might be bleeding. So I'm going to need to get my scarf. You know, I'm going to need to do something. I can't just walk past. Anyway, uh, he he seemed to be unconscious. Then he suddenly turned on me. Well, what transpired was the guy was drunk. He caused some trouble with people. and He was just basically drunk. It wasn't as serious as I thought it was. Gave me a bit of a shock when he turned on me, but he didn't do any real harm. Um, you know, I had to say, I'm trying to help you. And the woman was trying to calm him down as well. She obviously knew who he was. But so uh, we called, um, the police had already been called because she assumed he'd been stabbed. An ambulance had been called as well. But anyway, when the officers arrived, they obviously knew this guy. Um, he was mouthing off to them, you know, really basically just a common light. He was mouthing off to me saying he didn't need their effing help and stuff. Um, I have to say, what I saw there from the Fumbria police was absolutely professional. They were trying to help this man. All he was doing was swearing at them. They were being absolutely polite, calm, reasonable. So uh, I can't fault the police in that situation. And I think people forget that these are human beings and you know, when they're in the midst of a riot, obviously they're trained to deal with these situations. I mean, the Metropolitan Police deal with all sorts of things. They're trained for it. And, you know, you would expect that training to include, okay, you're going to get a lot of abuse. You need to know when to intervene, when not to, etc. But I think there's certain people that think they can push the boundaries the point of unreasonable behaviour because they think that the right rage enables them to act um, just in a basically a criminal way um, it doesn't it doesn't um, anger at police brutality is totally understandable um, I think the key for that is to look into training methods to look into police reforms and to insist that there isn't double standards for the police i.e. if they um, assault someone or if they cross the line, they are held to account. That's essential. Um, my issue with Black Lives Matter is they are saying, or at least they are putting out the narrative that it's only black people affected. That is simply not true. Just because we're not seeing white people being killed by police doesn't mean it's not happening. And incidentally, it doesn't mean that they're innocent. It doesn't mean that every black person killed by the police is innocent either. And it doesn't mean, by the way, that every time there is a black um, suspect who dies or who's seriously injured and it's a white officer or officers, does not mean it's automatically racist. You know, there was a case um, earlier this year where a white guy was killed by black officers, got barely any attention. Now, why is there not an assumption that they were motivated by racism? I think it's very dangerous to assume that just because the suspect is black and the police are white, they must be motivated by racism. You know, if they have a call saying, we have this description of this person, they're black, they're six foot, they're wearing a blue top, whatever it is, they have to act on that. So this is another example of just reducing things to racism, racism, racism every time. I do believe there are people out there who need to fuel the fire. And by the way, I think the media has got a lot to answer for. I don't like to use the term mainstream media, but I do think CNN, generally, their coverage of race issues, I think is very, very dubious. Because it's one thing reporting, for example, the George Floyd protests and other race-related issues, but it is very, very obvious they want a certain narrative. They very much tie into the narrative of black people are oppressed by terrible white people and it's 
you know, basically America is what it was in the, in the 60s. Clearly it's not. But if you look at CNN, if you look at sort of punditry and you look at the way they cover these things, it's um, it's very obvious what they're doing. And I think that's very problematic. That's pretty much the same with the BBC here and the Guardian and the Independent and I newspapers. Um, this is not to say that everything's perfect. That is not what I'm saying. But you have to, at some point, say, if people are just pushing a message of negativity, 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 victimhood, 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 then what is, what's that going to achieve? Um, where do you get dialogue? Where do you begin to address problems if the whole message is such a negative starting point? I mean, the demands that are being made right now, um, I think some of them are ridiculous. Um, but more, more over, I think some of the narrative is very misleading. And I despise the way that identity politics is right now. I can't, I can't sugarcoat it. That's how I feel. Um, because basically white people have been pushed into this position that unless they wholeheartedly support the movement, then they're either racist or they're at best they're, you know, ignorant white people displaying the white privilege and they don't, they don't have the lived experience. So, you know, how dare they disagree with us? Um, they're just ignorant white people. Um, so basically you have to virtue signal because if you don't, then then you're part of the problem, apparently. And if you're a black person and you don't endorse this movement, then you're kind of a traitor to the cause. I think it's toxic. You get a columnist like a Vua Hirsch of The Guardian who offers nothing but negativity um, and anti-British sentiments. I don't consider myself a nationalist. I'm not, you know, motivated by wrapping myself in the Union Jack and saying, you must never ever question problems in this country. But I do question those who offer nothing but negativity and they're constantly, constantly, constantly race baiting. They want to find racism in every single thing. And if you challenge them, you know, then if you're white and you challenge them, you're a racist. And if you're a minority and you challenge them, then you are, um, you know, you're kind of, they don't use the term, but they basically see you as a traitor. I really am very suspicious of anyone who constantly pushes identity politics. And that includes white people, by the way. I'm including white identitarians, so uh, white nationals who claim that there's a, a white genocide going on. I think that's nonsense. But, um, yeah, I think Saturday might see some trouble. And, um, you know, my, my sympathies right now are with the police in that situation. In America, it's a bit different. There have been, um, there have been examples and footage of police, corrupt police, actively engaging in brutality even now. Um, so I think it's a very toxic situation over there because you have corrupt police. You have far left agitators, you have far right agitators. All of them are mixing together. And yeah, there's a lot of peaceful protesters, I get that. But you also have a lot of agitators. You have corrupt cops, you have um, far left, you have far right. It's really a toxic mix. And it comes down to reasonable, level-headed people, black, white, Asian and Hispanic, who just speak out, just rein in on this nonsense. Because otherwise, I really don't know where all of this will lead. And it's very clearly spilled over here now. Anyway, I'll round this up because it's early. <laughs> Take care, everyone.